Good morning, good morning, good morning. Woo! My fellow change agents, transition champions. It's day 17, and I believe we're just getting started. We're just getting started. We are just getting started. The cream is rising to the top. Those with the tenacity and the decision-making capability are the only ones still rocking with us. They have decided that, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and complete this thing. I'm going to finish this race. I started something. I'm going to finish something. No more unfinished business for me in my house, but we are going to go ahead and and give it all that it has, because guess what? Everything must change. Everything must change. Y'all go ahead, put some change in the chat. Put some change in the chat, because this day that we have been given, we are going to show up with all that God has put inside of us, and we are going to respond greater than we ever have before. Everything that God has been building in us, I believe this is the season where he's going to release what has been stored up. And you guys know we've been storing up every day. You have been coming in, joining in, and just getting full, 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 so that we can reach the overflow. Go ahead and put the waves in the chat. Overflow. And you know what those waves represent? Those waves actually represent our expectation. And our expectation is to experience the goodness of God in 2023, wave after wave. It's going to be like sitting on the beach, watching the blessings flow in wave after wave. And you guys know it. The waves, although they may range range in sizes, they never end. And I believe that's what God is doing here. He's getting us for the prepared for a mental shift, a physical shift in ourselves, in our worlds, in the people who are with us so that we will be ready for what he's going to outpour. And I know it's already raining. It's already raining in some of you guys' life. I've enjoyed the testimonies. I've enjoyed some of the things you guys have said about how much this has impacted your life. But guess what? The best is actually still yet to come. We're just getting started and we are going to experience the goodness of God. Oh, oh, it's going to be good. But like I say, not because of what I say. I'm just here to stir you up. I'm just here as your agent of change, Mr. Change Your Life, Mr. Good News, Mr. Have a Good Day himself. I am just here to get you stirred up, to bring a little accountability to what's going on in your life and say, I want to see you in the chat. I want to see your names in the chat. Some of you guys ain't been putting stuff in the chat recently. And I'm wondering, is it because they fell off? Is it because they sleeping? Do I need to go pay a visit? <laughs> but no, I love you guys, man. I truly, truly do. But this is going to be life changing because you take what you hear in these moments, you get stirred up and you make decisions as a result. You actually make different choices that will lead to alternate outcomes in your life. I believe that all these moments are being curated so that what's inside of you will be stirred up so that you can go ahead and make the decisions that God is placed in you to do, realizing that at this point and at this stage, it's just time to take some control over what is happening in your life and declare that, listen, I'm going to make the choices that line up with the direction my life is going in. I'm going to have behavioral congruency in my life. My decisions and my behaviors are going to line up with the direction that I'm going in. Like I will no longer make decisions that are below my destiny. I will no longer make want standards to be high while the choices I'm making are low. Like, listen, your choices have to match the level of your standards. If you're looking for your standards to be raised, then you must raise a standard in the decisions that you make. But sometimes that takes some new input. And that's why we've been here in the morning because we understand this. And let's just hit those success principles that truth is new beginnings require new commitments and new commitments require what? Room. One, two, three. Make room, make room, make room. We have to make room for 
the new beginnings. We have to make room for the new things that God is doing in our lives. Like if there is no room, there will be no new beginning because new beginnings require a new commitment. It requires a new space for me to occupy. Like I can't have a new beginning without making room because I'm going to have to make a new commitment and new commitments require space for me to occupy. So if I am being overflowed right now, if I'm like just everywhere doing everything, there will be no room for a new beginning. And so we have to make room because we have to make new commitments and new commitments require that we have space. And so, man, it's just so important. One plus one equals two. Listen, and truth is a new vision, a new purpose requires a new you. And so you want to give yourself space to become new. You want to give yourself opportunity to become new. You know, and truth is one thoughtful moment is worth more than a thousand mindless traditions. And that's what we're saying. Hey, we're not just saying we're making room and we're clearing things out so that we can, but we're also making space to consume uh, information, some consume wisdom that's headed in the direction that our lives are going. We're saying that, listen, if there's going to be a new outcome, there has to be some fresh input. So I thank you guys for just studying. I mean, yesterday I seen people walking around with books and it's so encouraging to me to see people responding to what is good for their lives. Like it's one thing to say, yes, pastor, I'm with you. It's another thing to be saying, amen, and doing all types of stuff in the chat, but it's completely, completely satisfying to see people actually purchasing books that are in their place of occupation. There are people purchasing books that are going in the direction that their lives are heading. And they're like, you know what? I'm not going to avoid the next step in journeys anymore. Like if it takes me consuming and learning and growing, then I'm going to believe in me. I'm going to invest in me. I'm going to take the time to do what is necessary so that I can become what God has called me to be. Because we're not just hearers of the word, but we're doers of of the work. We do the work. We do the work. Man, put some running men in the chat. Like we are about the business, about going, about doing what God has called us to do. Because truth is, there's nothing more threatening to the progress of a new thing than what? An old mind. And so that's why it's so necessary for us to go ahead and say, you know what? I have to consume new uh, new material. I have to get those books. I have to study. I have to do this because my old mind will ruin every new thing that God has for me. It's just the truth. Your old mind will renew, will, will cancel out every new thing that God wants to do. And so it's necessary in those times of transition to do it. You just have to do it. If you're going to be a change agent, you got to change. <laughs> But truth is, the thoughts you meditate on form the identity we walk in. And that's what we're saying. We're saying, like, listen, you have to because these books, these wisdom, these chats, these opportunities we spend as communities, they give you new thoughts to meditate on. And those thoughts turn into the identity you start to walk in. One plus one equals two again, team. Like, if you are consuming thoughts that are moving in the opposite direction of where your life is headed, then you are going to walk in the opposite direction your life is headed. If you are consuming thoughts that are heading in the direction you want your life to go in, guess what? You're going to start drifting in that direction. You're going to start walking in that direction. Like it's impossible for you to head in directions that your mind hasn't first decided to go in. It's like your mind goes first, then your body catches up. You have to see where God is taking you before you arrive there with your body. It's like your mind goes first, your body goes second. This is what I'm saying. It's just good, right? Because we're developing a purpose, a picture, a plan, and accountability. We're having our journals and we're taking these notes and we're making sure that we're developing these things because when we come together, and I'm telling you, it's going to be so enriching. We got a few more things we got to get through because I need you to be clear when we get to those moments. So that way, those moments are efficient. And so, listen, it's going to be good. But today, in our perfect formula book, um, and no, we've been going through the five pillars of success, right? The five pillars of success, which is planning and preparation, professional accountability, social support, a, having an incentive and a big deadline. Today, we're going to focus on social support. We've been talking, we talked yesterday about professional accountability and the importance of it, but just realize this at the end of the day, you have to take 
having a social network that is supportive, serious. That's why I'm so thankful that you guys are on these chats because it says I'm taking the social accountability important. This is social accountability. Um, and so, hey, you know what time it is. Thumbs up if you woke up on time. Thumbs down if you did it. I check the chat. I know y'all are checking each other in the chat. Encourage each other. Support each other. If you see somebody go thumbs down four days in a row, be like, yo, bro, what's up? Hit them up in the inbox. <laughs> like, what happened to you? Um, you weren't, you, you ain't clock in. You ain't clock in. Like, what's up? What's up? What's up? Thumbs up if you're doing it. Thumbs down if you didn't get it down. Get it done. What are we talking about? We are harvesting a network of people who are moving in the same direction we're going and who are making a decision to say everything must change. And it starts with me changing some of my habits, changing my routines. And so you want that and you have to recruit that. Like sometimes we think it just happens casually, but it doesn't happen casually. You have to be very intentional about building a network of people that are there to support you and what you are doing and where God is taking you because this is the truth. Positive people are necessary and for where you are going. You must have people who are positive about the changes that you're making, that are encouraging about the decisions you are having to make. Like everybody in your life shouldn't be bringing opposition. You know, a lot of, like we said yesterday, that is really a place you want your professional accountability. Like you want professional accountability. You want to give those people the place to bring hard questions to your life, to bring the hard things you don't want to hear to your life. In your social network, man, you just want people to be positive. You want pats on the back. You want people to encourage you when you fall down, not tell you how far you felt. Like you just want people to be smiling. And that's why every morning I come on here and make sure that I'm smiling. Like Pastor Brian is being intentional about just my dick, my, um, my composition, just, just how I'm presenting myself that you understand. Like, listen, at the end of the day, whether you're whether you're doing awesome or you're struggling at it, I want you to know that I'm here to just give you positive reinforcement to let you know that it's not over. You can start over. You can do it today. I told you, we don't like to put ketchup on our lives. Ketchup belongs on our food. But if that is where you are, man, just make sure you clean yourself up off you poured ketchup all over yourself. But ketchup is for your food, not for your lives. Listen, everything must change. Why are we saying this? And so social support gives us that positive reinforcement. They help just to keep you encouraged, keep you supported. And it's so important that you have and understand the different roles that these people are playing in your lives, because it is important to have people that are always calling you out <laughs> and to have people that are like, after you get called out, they kind of just pat you on the back and pick you up. Like, yeah, you needed to hear that. Um, yeah, it was time for you to kind of face the truth, face the facts um, about what you were doing. And man, I love you. I, I'm, I'm here for you, man. You can do it. You know, those people are so critical to your lives. They bring a level of enthusiasm to the things that you do. They bring a level of encouragement to the things that you do. And so you want that social level of, of interaction where people are supportive, yet they're watching. And listen, you have to seek them out though. They're not just standing around waiting. And many people are waiting for people to call them out. No, it's time for you to go find some people. It's time for you to go like, hey, listen, no, you're, you're me and you, man, we've been doing some good things, but I'm about to take my life to another level. And I want you to be there with me. I just want you to be in my corner, man, to support me on what is going on in my lives. But one of the things that you do is you test the waters, as the book say, because you want to make sure that people believe in the direction you're going. In. So test the waters, share a small minor goal with people in your social network and see how they respond. If they act like they think it's impossible for you to do it, they might not be best for your social network, but share them a small taste. Like, man, I really think that next year God's going to, God's going to give me a vision and I'm going to become a millionaire. And if they're like, you know what, man, I think you can do it. Then you know what? They probably can be good in your social network. But if they look at you like, Man, like, I, I don't know, man, that, that that just might not be it. They might not be a good person for your social network. <laughs> they just like, oh, OK, I know from a professional accountability standpoint, the professional accountability would be like, well, what plan do you have? What's your strategy? Like, what's the business? Does this thing even sell? Like, that's what I'm expecting on a professional level. From a social level, man, I'm just looking for somebody who believes in the things 
that may even sound crazy to me. Man, if this is being good to you guys, know I love to see the food in the chat. But we're developing these different levels so that we can have a holistic community of people. Because let me tell you something. Without a doubt, your community is so important to your success. You becoming is so the community around you and where God is taking you is so important, but that you may have you have to take great details. And when you're pulling it together, when you're strategizing and putting it together and sometimes you have to just observe this far in your life, whose presence causes you to put forth your best effort? You should know that. Just take some time today and say, when I'm around these people, when I'm around that person, like who am I around that when I'm around them, they cause me to put forth my best effort in life. You want to know who those people are going into 2023 so that when you're feeling like, man, I'm really not giving my best, you know who to go around. You know who brings the best out of you. And I'm telling you, we all have people that are on a wide range of things. And there's some people that just straight up don't bring the best out of you. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that they're bad people, but you have to know that so that when you're in a moment or in a downturn, Trend, you're not spending too much time around people who don't bring the best out of you. Know who brings the best out of you. Know whose presence just causes you to go a little further in what you're doing. And man, it just takes some time of just thinking about these things. But next up, we talked about having the incentive, a treat in big victories. And this is so important. It's about making sure that nothing you're doing is unattached from some type of incentive, some type of, uh, of victory. And these things aren't Shouldn't have, they don't have to cost money and these things shouldn't be elaborate, but it's your personal incentive package is what you do when you get done with the task. It doesn't mean that your employer has to bring this in. It doesn't mean that your husband or wife or your friends should be a part of this process. This is personal, that you should have a personal incentive plan for all the big things that you accomplish in life. Because what's big to you may not be big to others, but just make sure that as you're accomplishing these goals, that you are setting in incentives. Like, man, I just, if I get this done, turned in on time, I'm going to reward myself with this. If I get this finished, I'm going to reward myself with that. If I accomplish this goal, get, man, people may not celebrate until you lose 20 pounds, but you may need to celebrate pound after pound, not by eating food, of course, because that would, that would be retro, right? Like that would, that would just mess up the progress. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I've seen people like walk into a gym and, you know, like, man, when I lose these next five pounds, I'm going to go ahead and buy a gym shirt. You know, like I'm not going to buy a gym shirt when I first show up like, oh, man, this is my new gym. No, I'm going to earn the shirt. I'm going to earn the water bottle. I'm going to earn the wristband. And that's what it's saying. Setting little incentives as you are progressing in your life, because, man, there'll be marks of achievement. And it's nothing better than knowing that your life is achieving things. And it's the fact of the matter. A lot of times we're looking outward for people to bring those into the, our lives. But I'm telling you, the best way for you to see these things effective is to do them for yourself. <laughs> Value you. Stop talking about what other people aren't doing and realize you can take control over that. You have the decision making ability to do that. Like you can take your own progress photos and put them on the wall. Like you can celebrate you and what you are accomplishing. Trust me, it will help you work harder. It will make sure that you're not feeling like you're unappreciative. Appreciate yourself. Listen, it works. I'm telling you. Then always having the big deadline is so important. Having a big deadline for the things that you do is so important. We've been talking about don't ever start a task without having a time frame that you need to complete that task in. Our lives need to have this type of deadlines because why? It helps us create room. You want to always be growing in efficiency. Deadlines bring urgency to our actions. That's all they are. We're not going to be people that are afraid of deadlines in 2023. You know, I see a lot of people all the time, you know, the question I get asked a lot is, hey, well, pastor, when do you want this done? Hey, when do you want this finished? And it's like, I can see like, like panic rising in people's eyes. Like, I hope you don't say nothing too soon. No, you got to understand, like a deadline just brings urgency. A deadline is just make sure that you understand the meaningfulness of your time and your actions. Like we have to see these things differently. These are the new thoughts. These are the new thoughts that are changing our mindset for 2023. In 2023, we can't be afraid of deadlines. We can't be afraid of having to be urgent with our actions. We can't be afraid of having to be uh, um, 
having to be meaningful, having to be strategic with our time. That's all a deadline is doing. It's bringing urgency to your actions. It's making you streamline your schedule and making you be focused in what you're doing. That's all a deadline is doing. A deadline shouldn't feel threatening. A deadline shouldn't make you go to panic. A deadline shouldn't be like, oh no, they, they gave me this short deadline. No, you should respond to deadlines like, hey, listen, now I've got to be focused. I have to be urgent with my actions. I can't have any mean, meaningless moments. Like deadlines bring the best out of us is how you want to see these things. And I told you guys and what we've been cultivating is understanding that, listen, nobody should have an expectation for me that's greater than the standard for myself. Like nobody should have an expectation of me that's not that, that my standard of myself isn't greater. It doesn't mean that you communicate that like you said five days, I'm going to do it in four. You said three hours, I'm going to do it in two. You don't have to communicate that. It's not a competition, but you always want to make sure that you're pushing yourself to your to the greatest you can bring. Like let's not run away from deadlines. Let's not run away from time frames, but realize all it means is there must be urgency to my action. All that means there must be efficiency to what I'm doing. And if no one's not setting deadlines in your life, you're naturally going to drift into complacency. You want it, man. Like there's nothing like getting jacked up. There's nothing like getting the opportunity to prove what is inside of you and allow what's inside of you to just be reflected in the world that you're living in. Trust me, in 2023, we're not running away from deadlines. Like, bring it on. Show it to me. Like, take out the lights. Somebody put a light in the chat. Like, bring out the lights, man. Put the lights on me, man. I'm ready to show up and show out in 2023. I'm not running from anything. I'm going to show up and I'm going to show out. I'm going to be the new person that I'm becoming. I'm not going to see my mind is going to be renewed in the area of deadlines and time frames. Everybody around me is running from them, but I'm going to be running to them. Oh, man. I know. I know. Just a little, just changing your mind a little bit. Just changing your mind up a little bit. Just changing your mind up. So our chapter of today, we're looking at 1 Corinthians 16. And I love this. If starting at verse 1, and it's so important that when we are reading in Corinthians, that we realize that majority of Paul's writing that he is addressing specific people. And so he says, now regarding your question about money being collected for God's people in Jerusalem, they're asking him questions. He's giving professional, he's giving professional response to the questions that they're asking. And I want you to see this process because it's the process that I want you to adopt in your very own lives. Like, man, there's nothing wrong with asking questions of people who are professionals in the area that you're looking to deal in. These are believers and they're wanting to do what is right. And so they're coming to Paul as a, as a, as a, as an agent of grace and they're wanting to know like how should we do this how should we proceed in this and they're seeking professional help like you should not be walking through life blindlessly by your own the bible says the blind the blind guess where they both go in the ditch and that's what happens a lot of times when you're just leaning on the people around you and not bringing in professional accountability to the direction you're heading in is you both end up falling into ditches but i want to pull this out in verse nine, it says, there is a wide open door for great work here, although many oppose me. I love that part of the passage. And I wanted to pull it out because oftentimes we think because opposition is present, opportunity isn't. A lot of times we think because op because opposition is present, opposition is present, that opportunity isn't available. But right there in verse nine, Paul says, there's a wide open door for great work here, although many oppose me. Listen, just because there are enemies in that territory, it doesn't mean that the God in you can't bring greater out of you. Listen, we don't run away from opposition. Just because somebody is opposing you doesn't mean that there's an opportunity for you there. Many times there will be people of opposition right in the same place God has called you to reap a harvest in. We don't run away from opposition, but we understand that there's nothing greater outside of us than the God 
inside of us. Like we won't run away because people are opposing what God has had us to bring to the table. Like the person that God is making you, the things that God is pouring inside of you, it doesn't matter who's against you because God is for you. Man, there could be wide open doors in the same places where people are opposing you. Just because people are opposing you, that does not mean that God hasn't made a way for you. We won't allow people in their positions concerning our lives to dictate what we do with our lives. Like we won't allow people and what they feel about our lives to determine and dictate what we do with our lives. Just because there's an enemy there doesn't mean that I walk away. There might be an enemy right in the same place God has opened the door for me. The enemies aren't my problems. If God be for me, who be against me? I tell people all the time, the only time it matters what the devil is doing is when you've forgotten what God has said to you. And we will be more focused on what God has said to us than the devil that's against us. Like who cares what he has to say? Who cares about the enemies that are present? Who cares about the people who are talking against what God is telling me to do? Listen, there's a wide open door for me here. Y'all, Y'all just put some doors in the chat. There's a wide open door. There's a wide open door. Many times it's so easy for us not to open through or, or embrace the opportunity God has for us because the moment we see an enemy, we think that God's presence isn't available. Listen, God can be right in the middle of the pool of people who are against you and God can still use you in the midst of those moments. And so I like to finish this up with here. Verse 13 says, so be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong and do everything in love. All that is so important. So it's like, listen, be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong and do everything in love. Why? Because you might have to walk through an open door in a place where there's people opposing you, but be strong, be courageous, stand firm in the faith and know that God be for you, who can be against you. Man, if that was some good eating, put some fruit in the chat. We're going on to our Trust Me book. And man, today, whew, Woo, woo. This chapter on composure has been absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And a pastor said this, and I'm going to just pose the question to you guys this morning. Are you aware of the value of the blessing? Are you aware of the value of the blessing? Are you aware of the value of the blessing? Listen, you are a blessed people. You are a holy nation, a chosen generation. And there is some things that because you are a blessed person, you don't even have to be concerned about. Listen, you don't even have to be worried about. And that's what Pastor was saying. And of course, he's still dealing with finances. And he was saying that he was sitting down and he overheard a conversation and somebody was trying to bring doubt and confusion to a person about the financial condition. And the person just looked them back in the face and said, I'm not doing it. I'm not participating. I'm not participating. This person had retired and they were suggesting that they may have to go back to work. And they were like, listen, I'm not going back to work. Listen, my money's going to start working for me. My money's going to start working for me. And what Pastor was saying is he overheard this person said, saying this in a conversation and he just repeated it back to himself. He's like, listen, if they can declare that their money's going to start working for them and they don't have the blessing, how much greater can I declare with the blessing? And so Pastor said, my money's going to start working for me too. And I want y'all to put it in the chat. It's going to start working for me too. It's going to start working for me too. Trust me, your mind has to go places before your body arrives. Many of you guys are like, I'm just trying to save up $10, Pastor. Listen, your mind has to go places before your body arrives. Let these mind, let these thoughts be in you. Let these thoughts be the ones that consume them. That one day my money's gonna start working for me, and that day is today. Listen, my money's gonna start working for me, and that today is the day. And he realized this about that conversation is that realize people aren't just talking around you, but they are presenting presenting opportunities for you to either believe or disbelieve in what God said. People aren't just talking around you. People are presenting opportunities for you to believe or disbelieve in what God has said to you. And he was attacking that, man, when you're going through seasons of needing to have your faith girded up, needing to be strong in strength, 
and, and courageous, you need to realize that every conversation that's had in your presence is even either moving you closer to what God said or away from what God says. There's no such thing as a casual conversation when you are a person of faith, when you are a person of belief, when you are a person that is literally living off of every word that God says, then you can't afford idle conversations. You can't afford conversations that are moving you off of what God said. And there's no such thing as idle conversations. This conversation either moved me closer to what God has said or it moved me away from what God said. There is no more neutral in your life. Listen, we can't afford neutral conversations. We can't afford retractive conversations in 2023. Listen, evaluate every conversation and say, like, is this moving me towards what God has promised me or away from what God has said? Comes. You can sometimes you have to ask yourself this question in the middle of the conversation. And if it's moving you forward, keep going. If it's moving you backwards, politely dismiss yourself. Hey, man. Hey, man. And Pastor was reminding them that, listen, if you operate in this world system, you can or you can choose to operate in God's system. The world system right now is telling you every day to think lack, think shortest. They are bombarding the minds of Americans with fear and negativity. It is an American thing. It's not everywhere. And Pastor realized something just in his world travels that, listen, the amount of fear that is casted through American media is far greater than it is anywhere else in the world. It's like they're always trying to pump fear into our realities. And you can't afford for those idle conversations of fear to just exist in your life. You have to trust me. You have to set up a hedge around your mind so that you don't find yourself drifting away from what God says in such incremental ways that when you look up, you realize that inch now has me a mile off. He was like, you got to be far more understanding that these conversations aren't casual, that this, these light of things aren't very light. They will weigh, weigh, they will bring weight onto the future God has called you into. And so he's saying like, raise the standard, man. Raise the standard. It's hard for the standard to be raised while you continue to make choices that keep it low. And one of the choices that we do to keep it low is we allow ourselves to constantly consume content through conversations, through media that are moving in the opposite direction of where God's called us to. No more going backwards. Put an X in the chat. No more going backwards. I will monitor the minor. I will monitor the minor. I will monitor the minor. Put it in the chat. I will monitor the minor. You have to start monitoring the minor things. Why? Because God is there and he's making sure that he's pouring in his good and we cannot we can't allow the little minor things that are becoming unmonitored to bring great weight over time. Just because it came in slow doesn't mean it's going to leave <laughs> leave light. You know, it's that it's, 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 it's just a drip, but eventually that same drip in the spot can cause a, 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 a massive impact. Next, bigger, faster, stronger leadership. This day was so good because now we've kind of changed, turned the chapter, and we're talking about bringing passion to an organization, bringing passion to your business, being passion to your family, being passion to your place of occupation. So we crossed over from how to overcome colossal failure, and now we're entering into what we do when it's time to reinvigorate that environment. And many of you guys are reinvigorating yourselves today. You guys are changing so many things, transitioning right now. And so this is going to be so rich, so rich for your lives. And when you talk about monitoring the minor, there's three things that you should be looking for when you are in that place in the relationships around you, going to the social accountability Every person, this this is not judgmental. This is just critical for your victory, critical for your, your moving forward, is you want to look at the relationships you have. And they're either doing three, you have to make a decision, either to retain them, reassign them, or release them. Retain, reassign, or release. 
Everybody should be evaluating all of their relationships at this point based on the new place God is taking you to. You have enough in your journals now to start even seeing the change that has to take place in your life. And you have to look at your relationships in your life right now and say, should I retain this relationship? Should I reassign this relationship in my life? Or should I release this relationship? Like, if I'm retaining it, that's because everything is good. Everything's right in the pocket where it needs to be for where God's taking me. Or it could be reassigned like, oh, man, I just need this person from professional accountability to social accountability. I need to move this person from encourager to maybe just supporter. Like I need to move this person. I need to reassign their influence in my life. Or you might have to release them like, listen, you are moving in the opposite direction of where I'm going. Like your negativity is a problem. And that's where it is, right? When you say that release button, it's because this person constantly is chronically bringing resistance to your progress, negativity to your environment, and divisive with your relationships. We have to be so careful about people who are divisive, like they're literally causing division in your relationship, people causing you to separate from those whom you love and whom you're surrounded by. These people are negative. All the time. It's like everything going around is just something negative coming out of their mouth. They just can't see the good no matter what. And they're bringing resistance to your progress. Those are the people that you're going to have to put in that release category for 2023. Monitor the minor, right? Monitor your mi minor. Because <coughs> here's the thing. Changing directions is relatively easy. Changing people is actually very difficult. It's very difficult. And that's why I'm just giving you these extra details to say, let me think about it. Should I retain, release, or reassign this person that's in my social network right now? And if it is a release, it's on these bases. They are constantly resisting, resistant to the new things that are being said to you. They are negative about their outlook on life and they are divisive with relationships. They just are constantly causing you to think of others in a negative light and asking you literally to be like, I don't think you should be with that person. Like they're just very divisive. And understand this, that many people that are just reassigned or reattain, you have to give them the time to understand the new you. You do have to give them the under, the time to understand the new you. See, many people are having to adjust to what it is that you're saying and what it is that you're doing. But when a person exudes or, 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 or gives off patience in your process, man, they may not understand it, but they're willing to be patient with where God is going you to. That's not a negative person. Someone is like, hey, man, I just need some more details. Hey, man, I just need some more. Just explain to me what you're saying. When people are asking questions, that doesn't automatically make them the opposition. Put this in the chat. Simply because someone is asking a question of you, that doesn't immediately make them the opposition to you. That is not the sign. Hard questions aren't a sign of disloyalty. Hard questions aren't a sign of disloyalty. Many people who care the most ask the most difficult questions. And I see people misinterpret this all the time. They see hard questions as a sign of disloyalty. And hard questions aren't a, a, a sign of disloyalty. Being impatient about your progress is a sign of disloyalty. If someone isn't willing to see you work it through or come to a conclusion, if someone isn't allowed, giving you room to transition or change, that's a sign of someone not being loyal or committed to your progress. Anybody who's not giving you room for that is more of a sign than a difficult question because many people are just that interested, right? Also understand this, agreement Immediate agreement doesn't always equate to loyalty. And this is so important that you understand that just because somebody agrees with what you're saying doesn't mean that they're going to be there for your journey. Just because someone agrees with what you said, that doesn't mean that they're going to be there for your journey. Like you have to understand there's many people that will give you a high five. A lot of that is your social support. It doesn't mean that they're there for your journey. I hope these minor details are helping you because we got to monitor the minor, right? I mean, I thought this stuff was so good, right? Here's another part, right? The process of discussing and planning will eventually answer the tactical questions. Here's the thing. This is so important that we realize that 
there are different parts of a process of something changing, renewing, or becoming new. And one of those things is a lot of people like to ask questions up front, but you got to remember anytime that you are bringing new vision, fresh things um, to a place, it's so important to revert or divert all question towards the greater good of why you guys are doing what you're doing. It's so important that you keep people focused on the big goal when you're first starting something. That's what that means. So it's like, listen, I know that many people, when you're presenting something new or presenting something fresh, they're starting to want to go into the details of how it's going to get done. But listen, you can't let people get so distracted in the details in the beginning because they haven't first been baptized in the big purpose. You have to constantly remind why are the what's the big goal? You have to take the small questions and point them back towards the big goal. Why? Because when people get too consumed in the details in the beginning, they'll start to work in a direction and realize and journey that they never understood the why or why it all came together. And so in the beginning phases, and I'm saying like as you're hitting in January and as you're hitting into February and we're getting into those beginning phases of this new direction that you're walking in, continue to remind yourself and remind people there's a big goal here. Yeah, there's some minor details that have to be worked out, but you cannot allow the minor, those those little things to become so tactical that people don't focus on the overarching goal that you are starting. Listen, I pray that this has been a good, good day. I'm super excited. If you're excited, put some smiles in the chat. Put some smiles in the chat. I am. I know I'm smiling. And I know I'm excited. Because I see you guys in here. And everything is already changing. Listen. You know I love to leave you with something from the Seven Directions book. But this one I felt was so fitting for today. It says, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. The people you're hanging out with today are shaping the person you'll be tomorrow. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. The people you're hanging out with today are shaping the person you will be tomorrow. And I want to say, some people say, man, how are people I'm hanging around shaping the future? Because, man, the people around you are sharing the outlook and the perspective on life. And you will pick up on what is being shared. You will start to view the world the same way that the people around you view it. It's how it drifts. Why? Because they, even if you don't believe what they believe right now, and just the sharing of their perspective of how they see things, you'll start to see things the way that they see things. But you guys know us. We want to see things the way God says things. Like we want to see what God says in 2023. And so we're going to monitor those minor and realize that these aren't just idle conversations, that these conversations are either shaping my lens, shaping my mind, are literally moving my body in a direction. And so I must monitor them. I must make them be the most beneficial that they can for where God is taking me in my life. Listen, I thank God for you guys. Oh, man, I'm so excited for you guys. But it's time for me to get at it. I mean, I've already been getting at it, but it's time for me to really, really get at it. But I thank God for you guys. Remember that today is a good day to have a good day. Mr. Good News himself, Mr. Change Your Life, signing off.